Well, hey, small group leaders, team leaders, here we are, week five of this devotion. It just has gone by fast for me, and I am so loving this deep dive into understanding God as our shepherd. And I was talking to somebody just this last week, and I was telling them, it's so easy for us to get focused on what? What it is we want God to do, what it is he wants us to do, when really God's always emphasizing who? us coming into a place of understanding who he is so that he can help us understand who we are, who he designed us to be and how much of a difference that makes inside of our relationship with him. And so this season of leaning into going, God, who are you as my shepherd? It has been transformative in a deep way for me. It's just impacted me so much in the midst of this whole crisis season. And I just hope that that's also true for you. It's much more than just head knowledge, just learning a little bit more about shepherd and sheep, but really it's about discovering him in a whole new way. And we're, we're all going to be doing that for the rest of our lives. Um, just moving from glory to glory, learning more and more about who it is that our great God is. So today I want to look at the 23rd Psalm and these lines inside of it says, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil my cup overflows. And I love how we see both the difficulty and the blessing inside of these lines. The blessing of you have prepared a, a, fe a feast for me. I can't talk. You've prepared a feast. You've gone before me. And that's what we've looked at so far in the life of a shepherd is they would think ahead of time, good shepherds would, strategically about how to make sure that the flock was well taken care of. So in the springtime, or sometimes even in the fall, the shepherd would go and they would plan out, here's where I'm planning on taking my flocks in the summertime. And they would go and they would weed out all of these little toxic weeds that just one mouthful would kill a sheep or a lamb. And they would get down on hands and knees. And it was long, hard work to make sure that they pulled all of those up and that they kept that pasture ready for the flock when they were going to lead them into it. They'd look for the predators. They'd make sure that they weren't around. And there was, there was all of this advanced planning. But then you just think about the idea that it's a feast. God prepared a feast as our shepherd in advance and it's in the presence of our enemies now i think about that and i think oh that feels a little bit awkward um i sometimes as a parent right you have that extra piece of dessert that's left over from the night before you're thinking you're gonna enjoy it for lunch or whatever the next day and then one of your kids is like eyeballing you from the other side of the table and it's so hard to truly enjoy that dessert when your little child is eyeballing it and wanting a piece of it and I'm not saying that they are predators or the enemy I'm just saying if it's awkward and uncomfortable in that situa situation how much more uncomfortable is it when there is an evil predator that wants your life, that wants your health, that really wants to take advantage of you just watching over your shoulder. And yet that's the scene that's painted for us. God has prepared a feast in advance, but it's in the presence of our enemies. As they're watching on, here we are feasting. I think about those next lines and it says that he anoints our head with oil. And we've talked a little bit about the oil and the life of a shepherd and how usually that was for pests. So there's this obnoxious pest that tries to get up in the nostrils of the sheep and drive them to insanity. And then the shepherd pulls the sheep close, anoints their head with oil and, and makes it so that those pests aren't bothering them anymore. And, and then it goes into this place of so much so is their blessing and care and strategy and intentionality of the shepherd that my cup overflows. And I, I just wonder, especially inside of this crisis season that we all find ourselves in, if we could just describe our lives in that way. In the midst of so much difficulty, in the midst of so much pain, God, is your care so present inside of our lives? that we would be able to say, you have prepared a feast for us. And even though there's concerns about health and finances and relationships and all the things, God, you've prepared a feast. Even though there's pests and there's little things, annoyances, things that we just want to get in our minds and our hearts and our spirits and just aggravate us. God, you pull us close and you anoint our head with oil. 
And God, so much is your care in our lives that our cup, it overflows and it spills onto our family and our friends and our neighbors and the people on social media and everybody that we interact with at the store. There's just this overflow in our life. And if it's not there, if there's this place of going like, well, I don't know. I don't know if that's really how I would describe it. Then I, I really believe that God would just want to draw us even closer. Just experience me as your shepherd. I want to help you understand who I am. And I want to help you understand who it is I've called you to be. And I want this relationship, it to be something that is deep and it's satisfying. And it's spilling out of your life onto the lives of the people that are around you. And I know, I know I want that for my heart and my life. Every day, God, I just, even though there are enemies lurking all around, it feels like they're breathing down my neck. They're just looking over my shoulder. God, here in this place, you've prepared not just enough to satisfy me, a feast so that there's more than enough. God, even though there's predators, there's these little bugs and just difficult things, just aggravating things, God, you pull me close. You anoint my head with oil. And God, my cup, it does, it overflows because of how you are shepherding me in this season. Let me just pray for you. Let's just believe for God to lead us into a new place of understanding this and embracing it in our lives. God, we come before you as our good shepherd. And God, we're asking it would be more than head knowledge. God, it would be revelation in our spirits. God, would you help us to understand what we don't currently understand? God, open the eyes of our heart. And God, help us to see you in a new way. That you are our good shepherd. God, in advance, knowing that COVID was going to be part of our reality. God, you prepared in advance. God, so that there would be a feast, even in the presence of our enemies. And God, even though you knew that there would be pests and there would be little things that would just try to drive us to insanity, God, you pull us close and you anoint our head with oil. So much so that our cup, God, it overflows. And God, we are praying for just the reality, the evidence of that in our everyday life. God, with our, our teams and with our small groups, God, in this season with our family and our marriage, God, in our parenting, God, with our neighbors, God, with everyone that we encounter, God, we're praying, God, that all that you have provided for us as our good shepherd, it would overflow out of us and would spill onto the people around us. God, would they just notice the difference? It would be so obvious that we're part of your flock, God, that we are a people called by your name, that you are our shepherd and we, we are the sheep of your pasture. God, we just love you today. And God, we just say it again. Thank you for all that you do in our life on a consistent basis. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I can't wait to see you guys this weekend over the Zoom call for our next lesson. Talk to you later.